Hello, I'm Jason Radcliffe from 44 Steel. We're going to be shooting a small intro to building tables. Uh, we're going to shoot a little end table today. Um, I want to go over just real quick tools we're going to need to build this today. Um, our materials, two inch square tube. We only need about 18 inches. One inch square tube, we're going to need about 12 feet. And then we've got a pivot angle so we can get our angles at 90 right on. Um, these little ones, my mini multi-angles. Um, we've got our welpers for cutting wire for the MIG. Uh, the machine we're going to use today is the Power MIG 210 MP. It's versatile, it does everything. TIG, stick, MIG, anything you want to do with it, it's a great tool. Um, we're going to MIG weld everything today for this, for this piece. Um, we're also going to use our Tomahawk 375 Lincoln plasma cutter. That is what we're going to use to cut our octagon out of the top of the 14 gauge steel plate top. So all the other little things, we've got our gloves, safety gear, um, fume extractor, angles, tape measure, all that sort of stuff will be standard stuff to use. First thing to do is get all the parts cut. That's uh, probably the longest time it'll take, but we want to make sure everything's clean and looking good. Let's go do that now. I did everything on this drawing. I've got everything set out for the eight pieces for the octagon on the top. We're going to go with an 18 inch octagon and so six and seven eighths essentially is our top piece. So we're going to cut all eight of those then we'll angle cut them. We'll also cut our base pieces at seven and um, four. We'll cut those in one shot and then cut them in half. All right, so we've got all our straight cuts done. Now we're going to make the 22 and a half degree cuts that make up the 45s of the octagon on top. So we're just going to set our saw at 22 and a half and uh, cut our ends. And I always make a paper dimensional piece from the computer of the exact angle, 22 and a half, and just double check to make sure um, it's on, which it usually is when 22 and a half and, and 45 are pretty easy to do. But you don't even one degree causes a little bit of problems. So what I like to do when I make multiple cuts like this, especially for an angle that I'm cutting the ends off of, I just make a stop. It's just a flat plate. We put it against it and crank it tight. That way we know that every cut will be the same. So we've got one of the sides cut, now we want to make sure it's like a trapezoid so we want to cut the other side going the opposite way. So we just make sure that's in the right way. The stop is already there to keep it from going anywhere. A little bit of pressure and off we go. So that's our piece that will make up the top for the octagon. We'll need eight of these and uh, we'll be all set. We'll keep cutting these. So we've got our top of our octagon all cut at 22 and a half. That'll make our 45s. We're now going to cut the legs so they're 45. So we've got this 90 degree turn down uh, that'll house our leveler so that everything sits flat. So I got this set up same way, 45 degrees, angle stop. So we make the cut the same every time and off we go. All right, so we've got all our angle cuts made. Now we're going to do a couple last straight cuts. But one of the other things we need to do is uh, make our leveling feet connection points. So we're using a piece of 3 16 one inch flat stock, and we'll drill and tap that quarter 20 to uh, accept the leveler. So we'll use that little piece right there as the end cap to our, um, to our feet, and we'll tap it and that will work out perfectly to accept the leveler. So these are our legs, um, but obviously we've got to cut it off at a certain length and switch it over so it makes a 90 degree. I decided to go with four inches on this one. Keeps our table nice and level, nice and strong on our stability. So four inches on this piece, it'll give us a three inch under gap. So we take these pieces and from the same one, the seam lines up on the underside and it makes our legs perfectly. 
Now we're going to clean it up with the grinder. This is hot rolled steel, so it's got mill scale on it. You want to get as much of that off as possible. I like the look of it, so I'm going to leave a little bit on it, uh, but you want to keep it all off the edges where the weld's going to be so it doesn't compromise that. So. Okay, so we've got our feet that are going to go on the end of the um, leveling system. So there's our squares. We're just going to mark them, get them ready to get drilled out here. So I just use a piece of welding rod I've sharpened up. Uh, it works as a scribe, but it gives me a nice handle if I have to use it anywhere else. So I just use a ruler, steel rule, and give myself an X in the middle. Nice defined line there. That way, our mark for the center point is always on every time. Now we're ready to drill it out. Okay, so we've got all the pieces cleaned up now and ready to go for welding. The last thing we want to do before we put this all together is pilot the holes for the um, adjustable feet. I only pilot them and then fully drill them out and tap them after it's welded together. The heat required from welding makes things move around. I prefer to do it at the end, makes it a little easier and everything fits better. So we want to get the welder set up next so we can start doing that. Um, this is my Lincoln PowerMig 210 MP. I had it set on TIG before, so we'll just get it set up and set for MIG now. So we are going to go with manual on the MIG, select that, continue, and I know this is, this is 16 gauge steel, so we're going to run this at about 180 on our wire feed, and then we'll run it at 18 amps, or volts uh, for that, so we are, we are set to go. As always, you want to make sure you have a couple safety things going on uh, before welding. You want to make sure you have a good ventilation in the area, or a fume uh, extractor. Um, cover all your skin. Arc burn can happen in half a second, less than that even. Um, so you want to keep as much of your skin covered as possible. Um, you want to wear leather on your arms in case any sparks or burn backs, gloves, and of course your, your welding helmet's set correctly so you're not uh, flash burning your eyes on that one too. Okay, so we are now going to put our caps on to accept our leveling feet. So one of the biggest things about this is you want to make sure this is straight and held on there. So you want to do four tacks. Tack all four corners, that way you know everything's good, check it after each tack, then you can fully weld everything. You can't put too many tacks on things. Everything should be held in place before final welding happens. So, let's do this here real quick. And we can bring this around and just check to make sure that thing's sitting flat on there, which it is, and then you just do the opposite corner. This way the piece is completely held in place. Now we can weld and then grind everything smooth so that nothing's going to move and everything's going to sit flat on these ones. There it is, fully held together. I'll grind all those down so it looks smooth and follows the size of the tube. Um, and then we'll tap in, uh, or drill and tap that out in a little bit. Okay, so we've got these all welded together. We're gonna grind these all smooth so they're flush. So when we put these together, everything sits flat because right now it's rocky rolly. We wanna make sure that sits flat so everything goes together good. I always do my flats first and then try to match the roll of the tube so that it looks like it's seamless and, and flows together. There we are, ready to be attached. 
All right, so next thing we're gonna do is, um, now that we've got these all ground flat, we're gonna attach them as our feet for the next, for the legs of the pedestal base. So I've got my pivot angle from Lincoln. Um, it's gonna provide my 90 degrees. I'm just gonna line it up on the inside here. Set everything right up. Make sure my angles line. And then uh, we will weld this all together. We'll do the same thing we did before though. You wanna put those tacks. You wanna make sure everything is held and in its place before doing that final weld. So what I'm gonna do is put a tack on the inside. If it's gonna pull, it's gonna pull then, but we'll double check it and then be good to go. So again, we're gonna check this against this angle, make sure everything's flat and flat, which we are, and then we'll put one or more on the outside so it can't move on us. Once that's done, other side. This way, before you weld it, all four corners are held, nothing can move on you, and you're good to weld. So now we've got these attached um, 90 degrees. Now we're going to grind these all smooth and flush again so they match the bottom. Okay, so the last thing to do with these legs before we attach them to everything is, it's furniture, it's something people touch, and I, I really like things to be super smooth and super clean. So we're gonna run it through a wire wheel real quick and just give it a softness that uh, a hand can handle. Okay, so now we're gonna tack together the octagon, the top piece. So, I'm gonna use my um, Lincoln Mini multi-angle piece. Now, this thing's great because it's got all the angles already on it, it's magnetic, and it's instant. That's what I love about it. You don't have to worry about holding things, a million things. Now, I've got it set up here showing the angles. This is gonna make a 45 already for me, like we cut these things at 22 and a half. I've got some extender plates, it's a small tool, um, and I don't want to have it fall through the cracks. I want to use it as a full flat, which I normally do on my two inch square tube, but the smaller stuff, I want to make sure that it's going to fit exactly right. So that's it right there. We'll put our tacks all the way around the whole thing, and then we'll check it out from there and uh, make sure it fits the top. Okay, so now that we've got our, our octagon together and it's only tacked on the outside, it can actually move just a little bit. And that's what we're gonna do. I've got a octagon in the size of what this is all lined out on our top. We just wanna double check it, make sure it's gonna fit right. So we just follow it, make sure it follows the pattern, which it does quite nicely. And then what we'll do is tack everything on the inside. Then nothing can move and then we'll fully weld it, grind it all, cut our top, and then attach our top to the main piece. Put a little bit of weight on it. it. Just keeps it from going anywhere on us. We're only putting tacks on it, so I'm not too worried about it going anywhere, but this way, nothing can move on us. So we're gonna put our tacks now on our both sides and then we'll uh, fully weld everything up. All right, so now we've got this all set. We'll put our top tacks, bottom tacks, and then we can fully weld everything up. All right, so we're getting ready to weld this all up now. Um, my table just happens to have a nice one inch groove in it that this fits in well. So I'm gonna weld my top pieces first and then transfer some heat. I don't want all the heat going into one area of the piece. It, it, it could warp it, it could move it. So I'm gonna weld the inside on the far side and the outside on the close side 
and do opposite and then just sort of just move along as I go. So that's how we'll do it. So we've got everything all tacked together now, both sides, all four corners, solid as could be. Uh, now we'll do our welds, full, fully weld everything. We're gonna do our flats first um, in the corners and then do our tops and bottoms lastly. Okay, so we've got everything ground now. Uh, we'll make this all smooth so the top fits on, grind all these smooth so they fit in, and uh, get it ready to double check our top and get top cut. So same with the legs, the top can be touched by hand. I, I like to buff everything down just to make sure everything's super smooth uh, so no cuts or nicks. Okay, so now we've got our octagon all ground down, clean and ready to go. Um, it fits our template, so now we're going to cut out our template. Uh, I'm going to use my Lincoln Tomahawk 375 plasma cutter for this, and I'm going to use a guide. I use guides on every corner. It's a half inch off, um, clamp it on, and then no matter what your line is going to be cut straight and good. So let's get that set up now. So we'll just continue this around each side and then uh, we will be good to go. Have a perfect octagon. Okay, so we've got our top all cut out now. I'm going to grind everything smooth, clean off all the slag from the plasma cut. And I've got a, t a couple little spots where I hung up on it, just a little itty bitty one. But we want to just fill that real quick, grind it smooth just so everything's back to normal. And then we will uh, fit our top right on. So let's get that done now. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up, set to go. Um, we're now going to weld this on the top. And we're only going to tack it on all our corner points. It's not going to fall off or anything. We don't want to warp that top too much. So, we'll pick a side, and whatever side you decide is your top, you want to put that side down. This on top, and then you can go ahead and just line everything up all nice and pretty like. And again, I like to keep a little bit of weight on things just so it doesn't move, even though a tack, you could still move everything around on. So that looks really good to me. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, last thing to do, these are all cooled and ready to go. So we have our leveling foot, it's a quarter 20 tap. So I've got my pilot already set for the center. Now I'm gonna drill out the main section. I'll countersink it and then start my tap on the inside. So here we go. We've got our legs, we've got our feet leveler systems all inside there. We're now going to attach it to our main pedestal post. So I'm using my um, magnetic 90 degree again. We're going to get this set on here. We already know that this one is 90 degrees, so if anything's off on a cut or anything, this will take care of that. So that's on now. Set that beautifully at 90 as well. And then this is our spacing. So we have four inches under here. So we're going to set this right on here. Set it right over the top of our pattern. Okay, we are all lined up. So same as before, we wanna make sure all our tacks are lined up and everything doesn't move on us. So we have one, and now we'll do opposite corners then all four at the same time. Now 
we'll just switch this over to the other side here. last one on this side and then we already know we can move the, the angle to the other side or it should just stand on its own. All right, so we've got everything all set now. Everything's tacked together. Uh, we're gonna turn it on its side and do our final weld so we can run these down here. Um, and we wanna brush these off a little bit just to get rid of any uh, extra carbon or smoke or anything that's on there that would create the weld not to be good, cause any porosity in there. We'll just quickly clean these up. now our base is done our tops done last part we got to get this attached to it we got to make sure it's straight and in the center so first thing we want to do is get this all lined up on here I've got this again lined up parallel with something so this will do the same I've got a view down so that everything becomes parallel on the same line so then we just play the so is it in the center game and 16 and a half would be eight and a quarter so that corner right there. Quarter. So we just want to make sure everything's all straight, but this is going to be the hardest part because everything's, we've got different heights and dimensions. So if we have some block that is one inch as well, which here we are, we can now set this on here make sure everything's square. So you can see we're a little off this way. So what do we do? This side is good, so we know that's fine, but this side's a little off. So if we put our tack on this corner and this one, it should pull it or we can manually pull it and then be all set to go. So let's put a couple tacks on those corners, make sure we're level here. With the two tacks, put our block back on. Now we're able to pull this into place. So the best way to do that, and just let's double check our other side, make sure that didn't move, we're good there. Best way to do this is just hold it in place. So see how it's up now? We just pull it down, tack on the far side. So we're now gonna put, we're not gonna fully weld the top on. We don't wanna warp this all out. So we're gonna just beef up our tacks on the four corners and we'll be good to go. So we're all set, everything's all done. Um, this is in its raw state now, so you could either paint, powder coat, um, leave it raw, wax for Arc Magazine. I'm Jason Radcliffe from 44 Steel.